Hello and welcome to another main SVDC webinar. My name is Kelsey Reardon and I am with the state team hosted by the University of Southern Maine right in Portland. And today we have main SVDC at CEI business advisor Peter Pocconi as well as some special guests. We have Hannah Collins who is the deputy director of Maine Office of Tourism and Jenny Cordick who is the executive director of Maine Outdoor Brands. And we are talking about nature-based tourism in Maine. So as we all know, nature-based tourism is a very important part of the economy in Maine. Um, it's also oftentimes the reason that people who live in Maine live in Maine. So uh, it's great that we're focusing on all of the small businesses that are doing such great work to ensure that locals and anyone who's visiting get to really enjoy the full state. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different aspects of that from guiding to products and everything in between. So there's some really great data that we're going to be highlighting. Uh, if you have not if you're not familiar with the main SBDC, we are the Small Business Development Centers and we provide confidential, no cost business advising. So we can help answer all of your small business questions. And if we can't answer it, we could certainly find someone who can. And oftentimes it is resources like the main office of tourism and main outdoor brands and all of these great resources throughout the state that we get to partner with. So we're very excited to all be together today. If you have any questions along the presentation, go ahead and stick those in the chat. If we don't answer it as we're going through, we'll definitely have time for all of the questions at the end. So just we'll get to them eventually. Uh, we are recording today's session. So if for some reason you have to leave early, we will be sending out a recording to everyone who's registered. So you can rewind if there's something you missed or you can catch up. So I will be sending out a follow-up email likely tomorrow morning that will include the recording as well as the slides and any other resources we mention. So if you're not already set up with a business advisor, there'll be an easy link to request advising in that email. Um, there's also a big orange button on our website if you just can't wait to sign up. Uh, we highly recommend it if you're not already set up. I am going to pass it over to Peter, who will pass it along as we go. But like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and stick those in the chat. Also, introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, maybe where in the state you are, and what your connection to nature-based tourism is. We'd love to hear a little bit more about who's in the room. But while you're doing that, I will pass it over to Peter to get started. Super. Thank you, Kelsey, for that intro. I appreciate it. Um, thank you all for showing up today. My name is Peter Pacconi. I'm an SBDC advisor. Today, we're going to talk specifically about nature-based tourism in Maine. This is a long winding tour, but there's going to be some great visuals. Um, and we're going to have a chance to, to talk about local businesses that are based in the outdoors, not only kind of their models and what they do, but also um, some of the different things that maybe they can add to their existing models, right? So you might get some new ideas today, but you're definitely going to get some great data. So without further ado, let's jump in a little bit. Um, just as a little bit of housekeeping to start, as Kelsey mentioned, this will be recorded and you'll get it. Um, please stay on mute if you could. And any questions in the chat, as Kelsey said, feel free to talk about where you're from, what you're doing, and she'll chime in when we do that. Um, again, I'd like to start out by thanking my two guest speakers today. We're very fortunate to have uh, two fresh faces in the outdoor world, but also people that are, are very integral to how it works. We have Jenny Cordick from Maine Outdoor Brands, which provides the link between retail and wholesales and, and industry around the um, really all throughout Maine, and they're a great virtual connector of people and resources in terms of workforce development. So Jenny, thank you for joining today. We also were honored to have Hannah Collins. She's from the um, main office of tourism. She's the deputy director. And so she's fresh off the tour talking about the new things that the main office of tourism is doing. So thank you to my guest speakers today. Let's jump in. A little bit more about myself and why I'm talking about this today. I'm Peter Pacconi. I'm an SBDC advisor. Um, I work out of the office in Waterville and also an office on the coast in around the Camden Rockland area. 
Um, I like to advise on all business, but specifically strategy and planning is great. Um, this topic is near and dear to my heart because I come from the outdoor industry. I spent 25 years as my life in the outdoor industry at a retail fly fishing shop. I'm a captain from the West Coast in San Diego, and we had a tour service from Alaska to Baja, California. So I spent a good portion of my life in the outdoors. I was a wildlife biologist for 12 years. So um, I'm the junction of business and biology is kind of how I, how I do it. So I love food. Oh, my glass is half full, guys, you can see. And, and by this photo, this is a fish from the harbor here in Camden when I was chasing stripers last summer. So a um, little bit about who I am. So a little bit about the SBDC, it is a free service. Um, we can advise on any aspect of your business. There are 14 advisors set up throughout the state by region. Um, if you're doing planning, if you're starting up, if you're not sure what to do, if you're looking for financing or just go, how do I market my outdoor business better? How do I let people know more about my campground? It's in the middle of nowhere in Maine. How does it work? Or how do I do operations for a campground? How does that work legally? Um, so we can help with that. If you do want help with advising, you can use this QR code or there's a link on the lower left. You can click on that when you get this, right? And all these resources will be provided to you. All right, what are we gonna cover today and why is it important for you, right? Here's the roadmap of what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna start out with, um, with Jenny Cordich from Maine Outdoor Brand. She's gonna do an outdoor industry overview, give you a sense of where things have been and what they've done in the last year. Um, then I'm gonna jump in for about 12 minutes. I'm gonna talk about some of the principles of outdoor tourism or nature-based, and then just highlight some of the models on the water and on the land. And then we're gonna finish up with Hannah Collins and she's gonna give some of the perspectives from the main office of tourism and uh, kind of their strategic objectives and goals and some of the metrics for businesses that they're seeing. All right, I'm gonna hand it off to Jenny. Awesome, thank you so much, Peter. Um, it's really great to be here. And I am, yeah, excited to just share a little bit about Maine Outdoor Brands and the outdoor industry more broadly in Maine of which this kind of service, um, nature-based tourism aspect is a really big component. Um, but first, just with, with Maine Outdoor Brands, we say MOB for short, so you might hear me refer to refer to us as MOB, um, but I'm executive director. We are a trade association that started in 2017. Um, we, at this point, have uh, more than 170 members. If you go to the next slide, Peter, um, we um, are all product service and retail companies uh, that are working to together to strengthen Maine's outdoor recreation economy. So these are brands that are helping facilitate an outdoor experience in some way from um, guides and outfitters to product manufacturers. And really like we're working together to, to um, envision this uh, connected and thriving outdoor recreation industry in Maine that is innovating and collaborating to support a sustainable economy and ultimately get more people outside. Um, so our goal as an organization is to really elevate the outdoor industry in the state um, you can keep going to the next slide, Peter, and just go ahead and go one more as well. So when, when we say uh, outdoor industry, what does that mean? Well, we have gear makers that are here in the state of Maine. Um, Old Town Canoe is making canoes and kayaks up in Old Town. We have surfboard makers here, um, Elvin, of course. We have uh, Sterling Rope, which is one of the, the best um, climbing rope manufacturers in the entire world um, is right here in, in headquartered in the state of Maine. And so this um, product manufacturing and gear component is a really big piece of the industry. We also have a lot of service providers in the in the state. So these are the guides and outfitters, campgrounds, ski resorts, um, organizations that are that are getting youth outside. Um, we also have had a growing um a growing number of more tech-based company companies. Um, I know Shea with Navator is on the, the call, which is a great example of that, Jamani and Main, Main Trail Finder too. So using technology to help um, inform and uh, connect people to, to outdoor experiences. And then retail is the other big component. So um, you know where you'd actually go and, and buy gear and accessories, um, interact with um, 
with employees who are really um, educated about, you know, where to go and the type of gear and equipment that you need. So L. Bean, um, there's a little picture of a surf shop, Main Surfers Union here in Portland, um, All Speed, a bike and ski shop that has a couple of locations around the state are examples of that. And when we look at kind of the, the economic breakdown of the industry, um, it's pretty evenly split between the retail trade, between the service side, um, between manufacturing and wholesale, and then um, kind of a bucket of, of other um, other industries. But it's a, a really, um, yeah, I think multifaceted industry. But the thing that everybody has in common, right, is that we're all connected to the outdoors and helping facilitate outdoor experiences in some way. But I think that's one of the things to... Um, to keep in mind in your own business, right, is the just the collaboration opportunities across the different sectors in the outdoor space from the service side to the nonprofit side to the retail and manufacturing side. Um, there's a lot of collaborative, collaborative opportunities, which is really exciting. Um, when we look at the kind of where Maine sits in all of this, uh, Maine is actually one of the top five states in the country in terms of the added value um, that outdoor recreation provides to the state's economy. So we're right up there with um, Montana, Alaska, Hawaii, Wyoming, um, in the top five. So we really do have an outsized economic impact here. Go on to the next slide. Uh, when we look at, okay, like what is that, um, you know, that, that breakdown between amongst activities. What does that look like? Well, boating and fishing, as you can imagine, is huge. Um, hunting, shooting, trapping, RVing is one that's growing and, and is a pretty big economic driver in the outdoor industry here. Our snow sports and then um, climbing, hiking, and, and tent camping. Those are our kind of top five in terms of the um, specific activity sectors. And one thing we always like to talk about is like it's Yes, it's the economic um, side is important, right? But it's also outdoor recreation has so many benefits to our communities and to our states. And I think that's um, one of the things to also be just like thinking about and considering as you're um, really working on on growing an outdoor recreation business, right? What's the what's the connection back into the local community to public health? Um, we we think a lot about how outdoor recreation is just really core to our quality of life in Maine. And so um, there's a lot of people that are that are really interested in it and could benefit from it. Um, and even from the state more broadly, right? When we think about how we can attract and retain a younger workforce, um, outdoor recreation is certainly an, an exciting way to do it. And 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 something that is um, helping spur entrepreneurship as well, which we'll get into. I just want to touch a little bit. I know Peter's going to hit on this later, but I just want to talk a little bit about the impact of the pandemic. Um, we did see a big hit in our industry, along with other industries as well. So this is the um, the kind of broader um, economic value add uh, to the state from the last five years. So you can see the big drop off in 2020. But I think it's worth noting that. In 2021, we actually rebounded and even surpassed 2019 levels. So I think that shows the resilience of this industry, but also the um, the fact that we had a lot more people getting outside, which was really exciting. And we've, we've, we've seen that trend continue as well. And so this is showing again, the breakdown even further back from, from 20, um, 2007, that just this uptick that we've seen in outdoor participation and again, 2020, a big jump, 2021, an even bigger jump. I think that's something that's really exciting. More people are getting outdoors and there's um, more people trying outdoor activities and just looking for things to do and to learn to spend time outside. When we look at the, uh, and this is data, um, by the way, from the Outdoor Industry Association, which is the national um, trade association that we work with a lot. They do a lot of, they have a lot of really great research and data um, and this is all kind of national level, but I think, um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we've seen this uptick in Maine as well. Um, but these are just in, in the past few years, the top 10 growth categories. So hiking, um, biking is up there. Camping is up there. Um, kayaking has certainly been really big. And speaking of kayaking, I thought that this, uh, this slide was one worth pulling out. 
all of all of these um, slides with the sort of blue bar graph are from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. They actually have this really great tool. You can go in and you can search basically any activity to see the trends over time. Um, so that might be something that's relevant for your business or kind of as you're looking at um, the market and growth potential. But I pulled this one out because it's it's uh, canoeing and kayaking specifically. And so this would include the manufacturing side, but also the service side. Um, and this is Maine specifically. So we we didn't see any uh, drop off in 2020. We actually saw a big increase. And then look at this massive increase in 2021. So um, that is a, is a space where a lot of people are getting out and paddling, um, buying new paddling equipment as well. It's a um, has been a big bright spot. And certainly um, from our conversations with the folks working up in Old Town, um, They've been very busy. <laughs> and then um, it's, you know, I, I also wanted to show this graph. It's It hasn't all been just a massive increase. This is looking specifically at the um, guided, uh, guiding and outfitting. So um, more the, more that kind of um, outfitting uh, tourism side of things. We saw a big, this, we did see the big, decrease in 2020, as you can expect, and not as strong of a rebound in 2021. I think there's still been some hesitation. Um, we don't have 2022 data yet, but we're hoping that that's, um, you know, we're, we're kind of getting back to those 2019 levels. And then I know there's some people on the phone that were um, in the campground space, and I wanted to just call out some of the um, really great data KOA puts out. They have just um, a wealth of information related to camping, um, camper sentiment. So it's worth checking out their research, but we've seen a big increase in camping. That's a big opportunity for the state. <coughs> Excuse me. And who's this, who's the new camper, right? So um, I think it's worth looking at the, the kind of demographics of who our participant base is as well. So the new camper is interested in RVing. They are 54% millennials, 54% non-white. Um, there's some really great data, uh, like just, yeah, specifically around kind of who are these, who, is, who are the new participants and how can we be thinking about catering services to them? Um, and yeah, again, like on that note, um, this is more research from the Outdoor Industry Association, but I think, uh, noting that the right now the percent of people who, who identify as outdoor recreation participants 72 percent of them are white and and the broader U.S. population we have a 57 percent white population but under the eight under the age of 18 that drops down to 47 percent so I think it's something really important to be looking at with our industry is how are we um how are we thinking about um, attracting new um, demographics, younger individuals in particular, um, into recreation activities, and what does that look like for our businesses and services we're offering? And I just wanted to then um, kind of close here with some of the trends that I've been following. Um, I think there's a lot of really interesting things happening in the outdoor industry right now, but um, some worth noting. One is uh, I would encourage you to look at the nonprofit and Exclusive ski touring. They're one of our members and they operate out of Mount Abram. Uh, there's a great feature in Down East Magazine this month, and this is this article here is from Maine Magazine. But Zach McCarthy, their, fan, their founder, has been doing just a really incredible job um, helping get more people into backcountry skiing. So, something that's kind of intimidating, right? Like skinning up a mountain and skiing down is a pretty kind of high barrier to entry. Um, but He's just been doing an amazing job, really breaking down those barriers, um, doing these group lessons specifically for women, specifically for BIPOC individuals. And I think it's a really great model and one to be um, looking at and perhaps thinking about for your um, business as well. And then another trend, I mentioned this briefly, but RVing is becoming huge. Um, we've seen just a really um, big increase across the board in, in Kind of camper vans, um, or you know, RVing, just more people wanting to get outside and uh, and taking the um, yeah, doing the RVing route as opposed to kind of the traditional tent camping. And then, 
gravel biking is one I also also just wanted to to give a shout out for. I've been hearing a lot about gravel biking recently, including um, I was talking to somebody who who recently sold um, his road bike and sold his mountain bike and then bought a gravel bike to replace both of those things. And so I think with Maine, we have a lot of gravel roads and uh, it's it's a trend that we're we're going to see um, going forward and so one to be thinking about as well. And then I wanted to just give a shout out for an event that we're hosting in another month or so with um, the Ruin Institute and with the main office of outdoor recreation. It's going to be in Skowhegan. It's a start summit and they've been doing these around the state, but this one is going to be focused on outdoor recreation and tech. And so it, it should be pretty fun. Um, it's a chance to just get people kind of across the industry together to um, solve a common challenge. We're going to be looking at looking at accessibility in the outdoors and sustainability and would encourage you to take a look at that and, and sign up um, to get some practice and just design thinking and um, collaborative problem solving. And then um, also wanted to just uh, share a little bit about MOB as well. So I would encourage you if you're interested in um, learning about main outdoor brands joining, uh, we uh, have some of our priorities just include collaborative marketing. We do a lot of advocacy and awareness to raise awareness about the outdoor industry in the state. We've started getting a little bit more involved in workforce development as well, and then just provide a lot of networking and education um, for the industry. I'm happy to answer questions there and check out our website at mainoutdoorbrands.com. And we do um, work really closely as well with the main office of outdoor recreation. And so um, it's another entity within state government. I know Hannah's gonna um, talk and the main office of outdoor recreation is connected really closely with the office of tourism, but also with main outdoor brands. And so we um, work really closely with um, with Carolyn Olette, the director there. And uh, that's another resource um, specifically for, for outdoor recreation businesses and organizations in the state. And that's on the next slide. Peter, I think that's my final one. Thank you, Jenny. That was awesome. That's some great data to see. Um, some really good information to grow on for our businesses that are in the room today, right? You can you can use that. And I encourage you to visit those websites. She mentioned the BOEA and the KOA data. The data is really good and it'll help you discern how you want to expand your business or maybe shift. Um, for just a few minutes, I'm going to go over some of the different examples of businesses in Maine, but just briefly, I want to go up to 100,000 feet and just talk about ecotourism versus nature-based tourism, right? Ecotourism is just typically um, a word we use when we're getting into more pristine environments, um, and, they're, and it's graded on several principles, but it's typically a sustainable business model. There's a development portion that works in the community that's part of that. And we're typically, when we mention the word ecotourism, we're talking about places that are untouched by man. So you think Costa Rica, some other areas, Maine has a very gently used resource, but it's a resource that has been used. And so we wanna be honest about kind of what Maine is and what it is in terms of the marketing and the advertising. So um, typically businesses that are ecotourism based promote travel in a sustainable way and they minimize the impact of visitors. That's things we're doing here already. But they also, the key here is they provide jobs to local populations, which is a big part of what we do as a business advisor. We want you to be successful, but it's good when you have a few jobs to, to actually push down the road. That helps the infrastructure of the economy, both here in Maine and nationwide. Um, I want to briefly take a look back. I'm going to give you two slides from the governor's conference on tourism. This was back in 2020, right? As the pandemic had just hit, we were reeling, we were all stuck indoors. We were just trying to figure out what was going on. But what we found was in 2020 that people were flocking to the outdoors, many of them for the first time. Um, and they saw benefits because now they were stuck indoors with their family per se, right? So it was, it, was, um, it was also a way just to get a breath of fresh air, but it was an anecdote to their mental health. This helped them work through the things they were dealing with in life, right? Um, and it really helped them focus on what was important in life. It gave them that respect. So the outdoors has come on in a way that it couldn't have without the pandemic. But this was also a really safe way to kind of get what they needed, but also a great way to spend time with their friends and family. So the 2020 created a resurgence in the outdoor world that is really unprecedented in a lot of ways. Um, and the trends in 2020, 
um, were very interesting, right? The World Travel and Tourism Council um, found that the sector in general tourism was showing early signs of recovery, right? Even as we we're going through the pandemic. And what was driving that was travel was seen now, not just as travel, but like a force for good. It was travel with a purpose because now we wanted to get away from some of the things that were challenging for us to deal with, right? We were being more resilient by going outdoors, right? So instead of going inwards, we went outwards. Travel was now used in a regenerative capacity. Um, wellness and adventure was now used in the same sentence. So mental health and physical health now became one and the same. So we're evolving in a way that's really neat. And one of the biggest things that I saw personally and also from a main perspective is I went hyper-local. I wasn't going very far, but I was hiking every trail in my neighborhood and I got to know every trail within five or 10 miles, right? And I would take breaks between meetings and do that. So those are the trends from 2020. So just so we understand where we've come from. Um, what I'd love for you is just take a few minutes and go down two roads. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of the marine nature-based tourism here. Here's a list here. I won't go through it. but um, And then after we look at the marine-based, nature-based tourism, we're going to go inland and look at some of the inland or land-based and water-based uh, models for you and just talk a little bit about what makes them unique. Um, so the coastline in Maine is huge, and there's a migratory population of fish. Actually, there's a couple different species. Um, the striped bass on the top left, that's right out of Camden Harbor, right? And I actually did that from a canoe. You don't have to have a guide. You can do this yourself. You can go do it. This is right by Curtis Island. This is about a half mile paddle from the dock, right? There are lobster boats going right by me. I'm catching these fish. So this is a huge portion of what we do and what Maine is. Um, there's a phenomenal resource for striped bass in Casco Bay. Um, and that picture in the lower left, is from Maine. It looks like it's from Florida. I want to show you there's some phenomenal places to do what we do, both with spinning rods and fly rods. If you go out past Monhegan Island, there's a phenomenal fishery for bluefin tuna, which is really not well known, but all the lobster guys know about it. But this is one of the things you could do. Um, as you all know, sailing is a huge component of the marine trades here. There's a long history in what we do, but it's now um, just it's, it's, it's in every harbor. I know in Camden Harbor, there's at least three different outfits that are offering sailing tours there. And it's not just a place to go look at the coastline. You can actually host an event. People are getting married on boats, right? They're getting out there and they're creating team events on boats, right? Or they're doing their meetings out there now. It's a great way to see the wildlife too. So this is another really neat feature along the coast. Whale watching to me when I first got to Maine about six years ago was a lesser known thing. I didn't really know it was a thing till I got here. I know there's a there's there's a few operators um, at a booth bay. Um, there's a couple different species you can run into: finback whales, uh, North Atlantic right whales, humpback whales. Um, killer whales are less common in Maine, but when I talk to the operators in Maine, they do say they occasionally see them, but they typically go around Maine for what they're doing, go up to Canada. For, for their migration pattern. But this is a phenomenal thing to do and can be done within a 30 minute boat ride out of Booth Bay. Birding tours are near and dear to my heart. As I mentioned, um, I was a wildlife biologist by trade, but I was actually a bird biologist more specifically. And I studied birds of prey. So I spent a lot of time with bald eagles, climbing in and out of their nests, doing banding studies um, from Alaska to California. Um, so this is, this is a really easy resource to get to know. It's really easy to learn. There's all sorts of clubs. There's guys that have been leading birding trips for 20 plus years down east that I've met recently. So this is uh, this is learner friendly. It's low barrier to entry. If you have a basic pair of binoculars and a guide online, you can do what you got to do. I want to mention a startup. Um, I met these, these folks back in 2021. It's called Northeast Ramblers. And basically what they've done is created a mechanism so someone can come to Maine, jump off the plane or drive in, and they can rent um, either a, a Tacoma or a Forerunner that's fully set up for a two-person venue. Um, mileage for the first 150 miles is free. There's a cooler involved. And you can go camping in a vehicle now that is built for what you're going to do. And it's got all the amenities for you. You can camp right on top. 
can drive this in. Um, so you don't have to take your vehicle down the back roads and beat it up. You can now go rent this and have kind of a shelf ready product for getting in the outdoors called Northeast Rambler. So I encourage you to try those or should you have family members that come to Maine that want to go do it and they don't want to use their, their, their Camry to go down the roads, they could use something like this. SUP is known as stand up paddleboard. This, this craze has engaged the nation coast to coast um, in a huge way. It's, it's also very popular in Maine. You'll see it at all the sports shops are selling these. They're an easy entry into the, into the sport. Um, it's also a great way to see the coastline and you can get a workout with it, right? You can take your dogs, take the kids. This is a great way to have access to the outdoors and it's fairly easy to do. Um, as Jenny mentioned, the coastal kayak crowd, it, that kind of engagement in the outdoors is not going down in any way, shape or form, just because it's not only a great way to see the coast, but you can get very close to birds and, and see life. And you can see Maine from a perspective that is so unique. Maine's coastline is huge, but access is a challenge. Right? It's very hard to see it unless you can hike out or get around, but this is a great way to see portions of Maine that you would never have access to. You can go out to an island and have lunch. Let's talk about the business aspects of nature-based tourism, right? What are the things that consumers look for, right? Typically, they look for options that are easy for families, right? These are people that have the capital to get in and do it, but there's low barriers to entry for a family, right? So maybe you have times that are kid-friendly. Kids tend to sleep in a little bit, right? So those time frames are super important. Um, typically, attributes of businesses that are, that, that are targeting the segment um, have minimal impact on the environment. And they call that out in their marketing, right? So you become a green business. Um, they have routines that are based in education. I ran an ecotourism business on the West Coast and I was explaining all about the different biology of the kelp and how they interacted with the fish and the whales and all the things that happened, right? Um, and a, a key component is you create environmental stewardship in your clients. As soon as people understand the resource, when they understand it, they want to protect it. When they want to protect it, they'll spend money on it. If you follow that trail, you can engage consumers in a new and unique way that other businesses won't. Um, and what this does too, is it creates community engagement, not only from people from out of state, but people in state. So we're now working as a team. I wanna also mention a, a, a business that I ran into a couple of years ago. Um, this is Carol Steingart um, and she runs Coast Encounters. She's basically a tide pulling expert. Um, she did some of her work at Shoals Marine Lab in New Hampshire, and that's where she got her love for the outdoors and getting into tide pools, came back to Maine, um, and now leads tide pooling excursions. And if you look at her model, there's a low barrier to entry. It's very kid-friendly. The times are easy to do. You're working around the tide still, right? And you've got to be able to park at these places. But in general, this is a very easy model to start. And she's booked as much as she would like for this stuff. So this is another kind of venue you could add to your existing models. Some of you in the room probably already have an outdoor-based business, right? You can add these kind of educational modules to what you're doing to add value and add another revenue stream. I wanna show you some of the work I do in Maine is around aquaculture and I, and for a long time, I helped fishermen build resiliency into their model and lobstermen. And I showed them how to do seaweed and shellfish aquaculture. I did that for many years with the Island Institute. One of my fishermen, Jason Joyce on Swans Island started an, um, a boat service. I wanna let you learn about his business. We have a retired Coast Guard boat. It's a 25 foot safe boat. It was stationed in Buffalo, New York on Lake Erie. The fender is built by the company Safe Boat. They build these boats for the Coast Guard and they're just an amazing boat. They're built to military standards. It's an aluminum boat. It has a closed cell foam ring around the boat, which is the orange color that you'll see in the pictures. We cruise at 32 knots in good weather so we can really cover some area fast. 
Shock absorbing seats. It has all the latest safety and navigational equipment. Yeah. Thermal camera, so we'll run after dark. The weather doesn't make as much of an impact on us as it would on other boats. We're very careful on the weather that we go in. We don't take any chances. But when sometimes the weather turns, you really get to see how this boat performs. And a lot of people have never been on a military boat before, so it's a great experience. It's like hopping into a jet fighter on the water. We offer all kinds of things to do around Acadia National Park. Super, there's a really good example of how someone had kind of really was took a shift in their model and, and built in some more business revenue during the summertime when they're still lobstering, but still has time on the side to do that. So, and SBDC advisors can help you through those kind of transitions when you want to learn about what to do for your business, reach out to your local advisor. Um, let's move inland just real briefly and talk about some of the other options you know, that uh, maybe you can add to. The fisheries here in Maine are very well known. They have a tremendous brook trout fishery, but being from away, um, when I came here, I was so impressed with the, the warm water fishery in some of the lakes, right? There's a huge tradition around going down the rivers and in a small canoe and spending a couple of days. Those are phenomenal resources, but the access to the local lakes here, they're filled with large mouth and small mouth bass and crappie. Um, it's some of the best bass fishing I've seen anywhere in the world, and I fished a lot of different places for some of my work. So I want to highlight that the rivers and the lakes here are really a gem that is a bit of a secret on so many levels. I'm always telling my friends to come out and say hi, because we'll do more bass fishing than trout. Um, as as uh, Jenny mentioned, hiking is still one of the strongest revenue streams in the sector in terms of what people are doing. Out there, it's a low barrier to entry. If you've got a pair of boots and a basic backpack and some wire, you can pretty much do what you got to do. So again, you can add this to any model, right? You can create some education around it and build it into a camping setup where you have you know, guided trips for this kind of stuff. Um, as we mentioned, fishing is an easy way to experience the outdoors. Um, and the lakes, rivers, and streams here in Maine are phenomenal. We have one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries um, in the Northeast and they and they fight twice as hard as a largemouth bass. But what I wanna call out is this is something that is perfect for kids or older adults or even young adults to get into because it creates an experience right away and access is fairly good on the local lakes. Um, so low barrier to entry. You can do this during the summer, a pair of shorts and some sandals, you can get down to the water and have a good time. Uh, birding um, is near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm a bit of a bird nerd, but um, there are any sort of tours, nature-based tours that are geared toward the wildlife absolutely makes sense. People come here and they wanna see things. And the hardest thing is for someone from a way to figure out how to do that. And they're happy to engage someone or a business to help them take down their favorite trail and kind of see Maine through someone else's eyes. Some other Outdoor sports that we see are rock climbing, which is bigger than I thought when I got to Maine. There's actually a really popular rock climbing area um, in Camden there by the lake. Um, but hunting and, and the outdoor shooting, um, those sports have a huge tradition here in Maine. So there's so many different facets to what you do and what we do do. It's a whole nother revenue stream around that portion of the industry. But I'm just calling out some other things that are could be part of what you do moving forward. Um, as technology has shifted in the last 20 years, so has the outdoors. Cameras have gotten smaller. They're easier to use. People are getting magazine cover shots with their iPhones now, right? Don't tell anyone, but that's what they're doing. So outdoor photography tours not only are easy to do, but people have some of the best cameras in the world now for less than $1,000 right? So it's good. So this is an easy thing to spin up and it's a great way to experience Maine. It includes hiking, and a lot of different things. Um, as we talked about, backpacking is 
the one of the greatest attractions in Maine were the terminus for the um, for a trail that ends here in Maine, the coastal uh, the Appalachian Trail um, that ends here. So it's a huge destination for backpackers. Number one, but it's a low barrier to entry. If you've got really some safety gear and then you've got some boots and some water, you can get out and do it. Um, and you don't have to be young or old alike. You can pick a trail that works for you and your clients. I'm going to hand it off now to Hannah. Hi, thanks, Peter. Can everyone hear me okay? So quick, check. Great. Um, and for those of you who I don't recognize on, on the call, my name is Hannah Collins. I am the Deputy Director at the Maine Office of Tourism. I've, I've worked here for, this will be my seventh year in August. Um, most recently, I became the Deputy Director um, a little over a year ago. Um, and when I started that position, my main focus was we started our creation of a destination management plan. So um, we've been working on that over the past year. We received a ton of input from some of you on this call, industry stakeholders, residents, visitors, um, and a lot of, of businesses as well. So I'm excited to share with you kind of like high level what we do at the main office of tourism. And you guys are, the people on this call are getting a, the very first sneak peek of what we, what has become of our destination management plan. So a lot of this stuff is brand new. So the 20 people on this call, here's a little, little peek and we'll unveil most of this at our, um, all of this at our, at our governor's conference coming up very soon, which I'll talk about. So let's get, get to it. <clears throat> um, so our new vision as of about a week ago from the governor's conference, um, we have a new vision, we have a new mission, um, our vision, Previously was to, our previous vision was to become the four season premier destination in New England. And we're, as you can see with all this stuff, we're making it a transition um, that directly relates to all the things Jenny talked about, what Peter just talked about, so we're so excited. So Maine ignites a sense of curiosity and adventure that inspires generation. Our mission is to pursue economic vitality for Mainers in balance with a health with healthy communities, the natural environment through responsible marketing, community advancement, and fostering collaboration among Maine's tourism partners. And what does the what do we do here at the Maine Office of Tourism? Uh, we're a state agency. We're a state agency. Um, we lead, convene, and advance the state's tourism economy by providing resources and education to strengthen the tourism industry, and foster a culture of stakeholder collaboration and developing strategy and best practices to promote and enhance the main experience for all. And through that, we've come up with, I won't read them to you, but um, here are the new Maine Office of Tourism's core values. And Peter, you'll be sending these slides out too. So I don't want to, um, everyone can read them, get excited. I hope you can attend the governor's conference where we unveil more of this plan. Um, some of the things we can help pretty much everyone everyone on this call with right now and what we what we do every day. Um, I'll spend the most time on this slide because this is how we can engage together and work together. Um, we've got a great industry facing website called motpartners.com. Th that's where all our research lives, our programs, our grant programs. Jeez, um, you can sign up for our newsletters. That's just where everything that we can help you with is on that site. So I highly recommend if you haven't haven't checked that out, check us out at MOT Partners. The next thing everyone, oops, you go back one slide. Um, the next thing is um, get a listing if you don't already on visitmain.com. That is the our consumer facing website. Our listings here are free. If you don't have one yet, um, go to MOT Partners, find out how you can, or you can contact me directly. Um, our PR media outreach program, if you're not a part of that, that is super valuable to most of the people on this call too, because when we get media inquiries from bloggers, travel writers, um, <clears throat> anyone wanting to do some promotion on Maine and some partnerships, that's you sign up with that and you could offer um, one of your tours, lodging, attractions, anything. Um, <clears throat> so we can plan a nice itinerary for those people. Sign up for our tours and partner news. We send those out monthly with all of our updates here at the Office of Tourism. We do have um, an updated, refreshed Welcome Me frontline service training that a lot of businesses use for their, their staff, and that's completely free as well. A lot of people forget about the main film office too. 
So the main film office can be anything. You can register your business and that can be anything from the services you provide, um, food, catering, hairdressers. Um, if you have a cool location that you think would be good for a movie, could be a downtown. Um, so anything you can um, list your business on through the main film office. And a lot of people forget about that one. And I'll talk about the governor's conference on tourism a little bit later. Um, and there is a link. You can download our staff directly directory when Peter sends out the slides. So and here is a sneak peek of our research for 2022. This research will all be posted. Um, it's pretty extensive. It's about 203 slides. So we study everything about the main visitor. Um, this will all be posted to MOT partners probably during our governor's conference on March 28th. But here's the sneak peek. So in 2022, Maine attracted over 15 million visitors. It was down a little bit from 2021. 20, However, this was because there were fewer day trippers. People were coming and coming for longer, coming more often and staying longer. So there was less, less day trippers. And those visitors spent over eight billion dollars throughout the state in 2022 and that's everything from accommodations, groceries, restaurant shopping. Um, so that was up 10.1% 10, 10 because of there is because of inflation rate but also because they were coming and staying longer. So and visitor spending generated over 15, I get my, I get my, this is a big numbers, 15 billion in economic impact to Maine's economy. And that's up again from 2021, 9.7%. And visitors to Maine supported the creation of 151,000 jobs throughout the state in 2022. And that is also up. So all, all good news. And we break down visitor activities. I just pulled two um, categories. So 70, you can see the food and beverage, touring, sightseeing, shopping. And if you look at number four and five, active outdoor activities and water activities, if you combined those, that, that, that's a pretty good, good share of what visitors do when they come to Maine. And on the next slide, I just, we go a little bit deeper and have categories within the outdoor activity category. So, um, Breaking when we break down active outdoor activities, you see, like Peter and Jenny were saying, hiking, climbing, backpacking is are not the here at number one, and then going now to our parks, camping, and you can again, all this will be posted to, to our website. You guys can take a, a deeper dive, and we will also, um, at the governor's conference and many other um, presentations following that, too. So we break down water activities too. <clears throat> so the top water activities, when people said they do water, water activities, then they goes into other categories. So you can see number two, we've got fishing, canoeing and kayaking, and outdoor swimming. Um, and now that Jenny had showed us the slide, I'm interested, we can probably, you can go back in the full report and see the difference between canoeing and kayaking from 2022 as well. And so those were just a few really high level snippets of our research that we do. Um, but I was excited to share. You guys are kind of the first ones to see this besides me and, and our staff here. So we're excited to share it. <clears throat> but um, here's some Expedia travel trends. Um, and this really ties into the work that we're, we're going to unveil for our, through our destination management plan. And it fully supports it and backs it up and all the information that Peter and Jenny said before as well. So we're real excited to get started. Um, family travels on the rise, <clears throat> inclusive representation and local community engagement, and sustainable travel options. 90% of people say they look for sustainable travel options when traveling, and 7 in 10 say they have avoided a destination or transportation option due to skepticism that the commitment to sustainable practices was real. So if you you know, talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. And that's what we want to be as a state and how we brand ourselves and how people perceive what they do when they travel to Maine. So that's really going to be really important to us. Um, and there's a big trend in outdoor adventure, which is why we're all sitting on this call, and wellness. And so this 
um, just wanted to outline a little bit how the main of Office of Tourism looks at sustainable tourism and destination stewardship because it can, it varies from organization to organization, from state to state, but this is how we're looking at it moving forward. And this is taken directly from our new destination management plan draft. So uh, the sustainable development of tourism incorporates a strategic perspective as well as a concern for immediate needs. It's collaborative with stakeholders, community members, tourism industry, and visitors. And when we talk about destination stewardship, that we mean we want to seek, we seek to balance and meet the economic and environmental and social and cultural needs of a destination with active participation from the public and private sectors, as well as a local community. And with kind of that, those thoughts in mind, here are our brand new Main Office of Tourism Stewardship Principles. And this, we're gonna be thinking about these things and everything that we do moving forward, hopefully for hopefully uh, forever and ever. We want to empower the industry through collaboration and education, creating a unified brand, education, preserving and celebrating our authenticity, encouraging responsible practices, balancing our promotions. So that's gonna be, that's a real, real big one here at the Office of Tourism. Safeguarding Maine's natural assets and upholding Maine's authenticity by showcasing Maine's local makers, artists, farmers, fishermen. So we really wanna, we're gonna do all these things with, with, with our culture and history in mind as well. And we also wanna empower Maine's tourism workforce and help in any way we can with that. So, and there's still a little, like little snippets, a little teaser here, but we've, we're really proud of the work we did over the past year. We're really excited to get started on some of our initiatives. So there's more to come. And when we do get those final drafts, we can, I can make sure that Peter sends everyone out the draft in an email. Um, so and we're happy to connect more on that in the future. I wanna leave some, some time for questions. So I have one more slide, I think. And we hope to see you at the Governor's Conference on Tourism. Our, our breakout sessions are all themed with our destination management plan in mind. So our, one of, um, our highlights will be the destination optimization program, our outdoor recreation and cultural tourism, a case for stewardship in Maine for all. So we're really excited about our breakout sessions. Um, you can join in person or virtually in Bangor on March 27th and 28th. I know that was really fast, but I wanted to make sure everyone had, had time to weigh in on questions, comments. Um, I will send out my contact information and all the, the related links. So you please follow up with um, any of us um, if you wanna chat further on it too. So I'll, I'll turn it back over to you guys. Anna, thank you, that was awesome. Um, and you used the words billion, and I've not heard that before in Maine, so that's an amazing number, so thank you. Um, Kelsey, was there anything in the chat that I should be aware of? Not yet, but if anybody has any questions, go ahead and stick those in the chat now. Uh, thank you, Peter, thank you, Hannah, thank you, Jenny. That was way more information than I, it was a lot of information, like you said it was going to be, but it was so specifically helpful that it didn't seem as overwhelming as uh, you led me to believe it would be. Uh, so good job to everybody. Uh, we got some some people just introducing themselves in the chat, pointing out some good good people to check out based on the context you guys gave earlier. But if anybody has any questions, we're happy to take them. Um, like everyone said, I'll be sending a follow-up email that will include the presentation. So all of those clickable links will be available. Everyone's contact information will be in my follow-up email as well. And so if a question comes to mind later on, you can always respond to any of my emails and they'll end up in the same place, uh, but we'll also get you connected to everyone. People are saying thank you for the information, many sources to check out. Uh, yeah, so someone was asking about the advising we were talking about earlier. So you are at a main SBDC event right now. We are the small business development centers. And so we provide free business advising and we can get you set up with an advisor very easily. There's a form on our website. I'll stick the link in the chat now. But you just fill out the form 
it asks a few questions, should only take a couple minutes, like two minutes, uh, and then we'll get you connected with either the closest business advisor to you. So our centers are throughout the state. Uh, oh, the QR code. Well done, Peter. You beat me to it. We are checking out a new technique with the QR code so you guys can easily get uh, set up. So all you would have to do in this case is take your phone out and open the camera app and hold it in front of the screen over that QR code. And in theory, a link will pop up on your phone and you just click it and then it should take you to the right place. Let us know if for some reason that does not happen. Um, we are piloting this, so we're happy to get any feedback. Uh, but once you're set up in our system, like I said, we'll either connect you with the closest advisor. We have centers throughout the state and advisors in each center. Um, however, if you have a very specific industry or issue or question, we can connect you with someone who has experience with that. So Peter said he's the, uh, what was it, the, the intersection of biology and business. business. There you go. I was going to say agriculture, but isn't that essentially the intersection of biology and business. Um, and so he's our aquaculture guy. I'm sure other people could help you if you needed. Uh, we have lots of people with restaurant experience, owning their own restaurants. We have many people who had businesses. The full spectrum is covered throughout our business advisors. So uh, they can provide specialized help. But uh, that is all, like we said, confidential. And it's a federally and state funded program. So it is no cost to you. In theory, you have already paid your taxes. And so you should be utilizing all the resources that you have at your uh, at your fingertips, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I don't see any questions. So you guys must have done such a good job that you answered every single question that anyone could ever have about nature-based businesses in Maine. So congratulations. Shay says amazing <laughs> job. So we are concurring. Thank you again, everyone. Thanks, everyone. This was great. This was great. Thanks, Kelsey, and thanks to Jenny and Hannah for joining us today. It was really informative. Um, so hopefully it'll help our folks. Um, and feel free to reach out to any of us um, after this webinar. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon.